welcome to part two of the 858 present grand restoration so if you didn't see part one i got this on uh, ebay for 70 bucks kind of sight unseen you know um it does actually work i mean it's not perfect um notice how the meter doesn't work and but if you're not familiar with this this present grand radio it's considered one of the best SSB receiving radios of all times, or one of the best CBs of all times. Uh, and one of the reasons is why is it's a 858 PLL chip in there. I guess it was really highly sought after. Um, like when Uniden came out with its board, they didn't cut any corners. You know, these, these were just designed for their high-end radios. Um, it's the same PLL that you actually use in the Teddy R, but this is a non-SSB version of the same radio, pretty much. Like, they pretty much look identical on the front. Um, except this one doesn't have SSB, but they both were out around the same time. And they both have that 858 chip. Um, so this one originally had like a, with the, like the multi, uh, had like the band uh, mod, where you could go higher and lower, but it was a headache to deal with, and it was, originally the guy told me it was S SSB mod, but it wasn't, so. But I want to do the same thing, so I already cleaned this one up, kind of went through it all, cleaned it up, replaced the meter, the meter was bad. Um, the meter in this one is bad too, or there's something wrong with it. But it doesn't look like a factory meter, and I'll show you why in a couple seconds. Um, but yeah, I'm going to clean the cover off first and try to get it just like that. So I just I used basically some Dawn, I scrubbed it, and then I go back and I, I might hit it with some WD-40 or silicone, depending on you know, what, what looks better. But on this one I actually use WD-40, and that's what's giving it kind of like that shine. Um, Alright, so let's take the case cover off here. This, 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 I can tell there's a big difference between the Taiwan made one, and this is actually made in Japan. Like the metal thicker, this whole heavier, the radio is a lot heavier. So, um, like the metal thicker all around. Yeah, this Japanese version actually has, uh, has like this little metal tab, whereas I, didn't I haven't seen this metal tab in any of these other unit and base radios. Um, I haven't worked on a lot of radios, so I mean, I haven't seen them all, but so far I haven't seen one of this with a tab on it. So the reason why I was thinking uh, this is not a factor of meter because it looks like it says made in Taiwan or China or something like that right there on that meter. So I think on this one I might go a little more in depth cleaning just because it's such a highly desirable radio. They're very rare. Um, you know, I'm going to take off the mic here. So I have a, it didn't come with the mic, but I actually had a present mic from the other radio. Um, all right, so yeah, a little dusty inside. So I'm gonna blow up my air compressor, but I just wanted to give you guys to show this one. I, I don't know, just want to show you guys a clean radio. Like you know, ta-da, it's done. Um, that way you can kind of at least see what it looked like before and after. So yeah, the, like I said, everything seemed like it worked just with my my initial testing. So I'm pretty happy with that. But the meter is stuck and not moving, so I'm gonna take this cover off. You know, everything about this radio just seems like it's more well built than the Taiwan equivalent, you know? Like this metal thick, you have these little copper tabs here. I mean, these things feel thicker here, like these big side tabs. Look how thick that metal is. Um, I also like how they put the speaker. Uh, it's not mounted to the cover, so you always have that nightmare of trying to deal with the speaker and the wire. Um, so I don't know if I can maybe replace these vibration dampers or just try to keep them Clean because I want to scrub it down with water, you know. But yeah, when I first blow this out with my air compressor, it's pretty messy in there. And then I said I did that initial inspection and I looked for like uh, burnout caps, and I and, you know, I also wanted to figure out what the, the main board was. But what's funny is this is even a it's as hard to hard to figure out because this main board is one seven six AD. Um, whereas a lot of the, in the rig database it shows one nine six. Like a different, like a, so this must have been a really early version of it, maybe. Not sure. So I don't know if this had been gone through at some point. Um, because this is what, late 70s? So I think they came out in 77, 76. So maybe somebody had gone through it just because of the zip ties. Um, but I think it had toast and caps. I can't remember, I have to look at the caps again. But it seemed like the caps were not 
I'm just looking for something that doesn't look like it's non-standard, you know? Like, what's that? Is that, is that standard? Yeah, the guy that I got this from didn't know much about it, so I think he must have just got it some other thing, you know? So, so here's what was throwing me off. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that says China on that stick right there, and this thing was obviously made in Japan. And this is the one I took off the the other radio, the Teddy R. Um, and that's actually what I'm used to seeing, something like that in the, in the radios. Um, these are kind of a headache to fix. I mean, I guess I could try to fix this one again, but yeah, it's like a clock almost. It has to be like perfect tension, you know, on these set screws. Um, all right, so I'm going to get my air compressor out and see if I can get some initial dust off here. Yeah, if you guys are familiar with this radio, let me know if you think this is factory. For some reason, this doesn't seem like these black zip ties would be factory, but could be wrong. So, you know, like I said, 70s. Then it has an Omron relay here. Um, I'm trying to figure out if this thing has been recapped before. Um, because it has Tosin capacitors, right? T-O-S-I-N. And they're made in Japan. But is that what they were using back then? You know, how come, you know, not Nijicon, Rubicon? Um, yeah, I just don't know if this thing's been recapped at some point. Or if that's factory. Because it looks very clean. And obviously somebody replaced the meter, so... Alright, I'm going to try to get the front panel off here. Um, I also noticed that this thing down here was kind of bent at an angle. See over there? It's, it's like bent down. Um, let me try to be more careful of this thing. I also noticed like a little corrosion in the back here. So I'm going to try to get some rubbing alcohol and see if I can clean that up a little bit. Yeah, very desirable radios. Yeah, seventy dollars. It was seventy dollars. Kind of like no mic, no power cord. Just kind of like it is what it is. Yeah, this thing's pretty dusty. So all the pots, I the knobs, pop potentiometers feel okay, except for this mic thing doesn't feel right. So that might have happened when I was pulling it off there. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, yeah, the mic one definitely feels like it has issues. Um, but it looks like there's a mix match of different pots on there, so I really feel like this radio's gone, been gone through. So I'm thinking just the four screws on the sides will get it off. The cool thing about when you're videoing, when you think you're taking it apart, like this, I gotta make sure, I gotta remember that the white is on the right, and the red is on the left for the diode, the transmit diode on the front there. Alright, so it seems like my, this one might have been replaced, but this just, that one's off, the mic gain, even the, the volume feels a little crunchy too. So it needs, like, feels like it needs to be lubed up or something. So I do actually have deoxit. I mean, I use it in all my videos, fixing stuff, switches, contacts. Yeah, if you're watching this channel, you're probably already familiar with it. So I've got to put it in like all the little switch areas, you know. And uh, I didn't see like a, all the numbers seem like they were fine. I wasn't missing any digits. So um, I also I'd like to get some deoxit in there and clean those things off the BFO, but. Um, that feels pretty good. Like I said, I didn't see any missing things here, but if I can get these... I'd like to put all this stuff in my ultrasonic cleaner, like the, the switch buttons here. Yeah, it's pretty dusty still, so I'm going to get my air compressor, pull the rest of that stuff off. Alright, so I'm going to ultrasonic clean the knobs here. Um, the good thing is I have a radio that looks exactly like it, that other one, the Teddy R. So whatever has the better knobs, I'll put on the, the better radio. Okay. Alright, so I noticed there's a tiny little hole in the speaker. So I don't know if I did that or if it was like that. I'll go back to my videos and see. But I mean that's something that actually I was flipping around the bench and it poked through maybe. Um I guess I didn't really look that closely. But yeah, this is probably a fragile speaker, you know. Material it's like composite or cardboard or something. Um I mean, I do have extra speakers, probably not as good as this, from like other CBs that have, like part CBs. I mean, I've been actually into CBs for over 20 years. I just, you know, I didn't really do a lot on the channel because for a long time I wasn't really into it. But all my trucks have CBs in them and, and uh, you know, I've been messing with CBs for a long time. Since I was my late teens. Is that a cocoon of some sort? 
Yeah, it looks like there was like some kind of water came through the speaker. You'll see like when I, I already cleaned the covers off, but I'm letting them dry. But it looked like some kind of something came through the, um, like some kind of liquid, you know. You know, sometimes you get lucky with these meters. It's it's a combination of just getting these screw tension correctly, but if you go out too far, then it dislodges. And it's like, you have to get it lodged back in there again. I, I did that with the other one. But there was just too many issues with that one. But yeah, take a look, so. So yeah, I'm trying to get the, um, this one doesn't actually have a magnetic lever. So it goes by getting it back to zero. So I'm gonna just, I'm trying to bend the lever. Um, these, you can adjust that little that thing in the back. It's like a tensioner. You can kind of change the magnetic position of it. All right, so I'm never sure how to use the light. So, um, I think I can pull I mean, I do actually have white LEDs, but, um, I don't know, I guess I'm not going to keep totally factory, but because I'm missing, I have to fix that potentiometer to pull out, and the mic gain, and but all the deox, it seems like it's freed up a lot of stuff. Um, i got to bend that straight, the VFO, and then, all right, looking good. All right, so I found the dimmer circuit. I'm probably going into too much detail, but here you go. So that's controlled by the um, the dimmer switch. Um, so that's the dimmer circuit. Um, all right, so what's weird is I have a, I, I, I guess I could keep it. I kind of like the white LEDs better though uh, than the yellow light, but I do actually have an extra bulb. All right, so now that I got the meter fixed, um, and light situation figured out. Um, I'm gonna check out this, uh, see if I can fix this potometer pot here, potentiometer. Um, looks like it just pops some tabs off, but my local Marvac, my electronics place doesn't have one, so. All right, so my camera battery's gonna die, but looks like the little wiper thing right there got pulled up, so maybe I can push it back on place. All right, I got those things cleaned up, let them dry a little bit. Um, in the air stuff in the, Got the knobs cleaning the ultrasonic cleaner. So this is day two. Um, all right, so last night I got the, this meter working again. Um, and also I fixed that pot. So I was able to pop that thing back in place. I had to pop the cover off. You guys have never seen what it looks like inside of a pot. That's where it is. So, all right, so I'm gonna pop that cover back on, pop it back in place. And uh, yeah, I, I need to figure, I actually do have an extra light bulb, so. I gotta figure out a working light bulb, so I already tested it. So, um, do I wanna go LED, white LED, or wanna go with a, like a light bulb here? I think the white LED looks better, but it depends if you wanna keep it completely original or not. All right, so you can clearly see the VFO, at least I can see it from here, is bent forward. It's going this direction. Yeah, you can tell, like when I was doing it, it, was, it, was, it wasn't seen on the face plate flush. I see if I can bend that back. Yeah, I'm not sure what you call this thing in the receiver world, but I know in the ham world it's called VFO. Um, I don't want to risk breaking this thing because it'd be hard to find a new one. It looks like I mean, I could, they look pretty, I mean, this looks pretty common for these unit ends, but um, I think I'm just going to shim this thing straight. Like get a shim behind there between one of these screws to get it straight because I was trying to bend it a little bit and I was like, man, I don't want to put too much pressure on that thing. So. Right, so I got that VFO out, man, but now you can see um, how bent that thing is. It's just not straight, you know? So I don't know if someone whacked this thing on hard or what. So I'm going to take it off and, yeah, I keep on getting deeper and deeper. All right, so I love those white LEDs, man. So much better. Dimmer function works a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, I feel like I got that kind of straight. Yeah, I'm obviously not doing this for money. <laughs> I wouldn't be spending that much time. It's more like just a fun project, you know? Um, yeah, we better off just doing IT work than doing this kind of stuff. Um, okay. All right, making some progress. So the speaker, like I was, I'm using wood glue. Actually, I read a lot of stuff people online that they use wood glue and just to fill the whole hole right there. So I'm then in my first coat dry. I'm kind of going through the back of it, kind of pushing it both both sides. 
All right, got the face back back on, letting the letter set up glue dry in there. I can probably find it easily, a cheap little speaker right now. My other CB speakers are too small for that. I have a box of spare parts. Um, like I said, I've been doing CBs for since I was a teenager. I just haven't been into it for a long time. Um, all right, let's see here. All right. I mean, I do have a basic antenna hooked up right now. What am I in right now? AM. Okay, yeah. Uh, getting some needle swing now. Oh, I don't know the volume. Or oh, sculptures down here. Alright, time to close the car around. So I might or might not get a new speaker, I'm not sure. I said, I don't I'm probably gonna keep this radio. I don't know. I'm just gonna think about it. You already got I mean I love that road top right there. So and I have that at full base station, which I might or might not keep, but I really just need one or two SSB radios. One's a primary, one's a backup. So I don't know. Um I'll get this cover on here. Yeah, this one goes first. I know my lighting's not good in this actual specific spot. I really turned out good though. I think the case, the WD-40 definitely helped out. I mean, what I did, I took the case cover and I scrubbed it in Dawn. Then I let it dry and then I went back to WD-40. I forgot to screw Small one up here. Yeah, very well built radio. Extremely sturdy, way thicker metal than all the others. I mean, this is part two and a part two, but if there's gonna be a part three, I'm gonna recap it. So if I decide to keep it, which I probably will. I've already put so much time in this thing. I've already put five hours in this thing already, at least. Um, got the classic pretty clean. Let's see if you can see it. I got the yeah, that looked pretty good. The, the gray, you know, I kind of WD 40 did, ultrasonic cleaned it, all the buttons here, you know. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know. I don't know if I, <laughs> I, don't know if I can sell it. I don't know. I think I'm going to recap it. I don't know. I'll think about it. Alright, guys. Cool.